Hello everybody, my name is Leo aka Knockdef and today I'm gonna bring you guys a tutorial. Yes, uh, a shader graph tutorial. Uh, in this case here I'm using HDRP but you guys can use any versions ever. So uh, this is what I'm gonna be teaching you guys. So essentially uh, this is an assortment of particles from the video game that I'm developing, Fight and Fall. And as you guys can see here, those torches, they have those little fiery bits. Uh, we have this shield here that has a lot of fire in it. We have this fire stream VFX, this kind of like jet of fire. This fire on the ground here that's also, you know, another VFX. This explosion here that has uh, this fire shader in a part of it. And all of those VFX, they use the same shader. So uh, it's a very useful... Uh, um, shader for creating procedural fire and well procedural in quotation marks right but uh it looks very good and this is like one of the prime examples of it being used and the same goes uh for the little torches here so the actual bits and pieces of of fiery flames are what i mean here and uh yeah so let's show you guys how how to do it so let's create here uh i'm, I'm just going to create in a random folder because i have no intention of keeping the shader alive since i already have it so let's go hdrp and let's make a unlit graph you guys can use any unlit graph ever so this is going to be our uh tutorial fire so let's open that up very nice uh, oh, <laughs> it opened on my second monitor. I apologize. So, if we go in here, uh, I'm assuming that you guys know a little bit of shader graph, so I'm not going to teach everything from scratch, but uh, yeah. So, let's already make this a transparent shader. Um, and let's make it... I personally like making my fires additive, but this is kind of a personal thing, right? You don't necessarily need to do it, but, you know, it's your call. So, for now, I think that's what we're going to change. Uh, so, let's start. Uh, the whole idea behind this is that uh, you can create lots and lots of uh, uh, fire pellets procedurally. So, this is why I like this shader so much. Because, as you guys can see here, uh, this fire right here is one hell of a lot different than this fire pellet here. And yet, they use the same shader. And the same goes for this guy, and the same goes for the trail of this uh, VFX. All of them use the same shader, uh, but uh, uh, this is the cool thing, right? You can get a lot of variation in your fires, but they still feel part of the same set. So, uh, we use a lot of distortion for that. So, we're going to use a uh, technique called displacement mapping. So, for that, we're going to need a texture. So, let's call this one displacement texture. All right, so let's drag that over and let's select here our texture. So I am going to take an existing texture here that I have because it's a very like packed noise, right? So if you guys don't know what packed means, essentially it means that uh, we can put many, many different textures in one texture inside of one texture which is the case that we're doing here so on the red channel of the texture we have one noise on the green we have another one on the blue we have, we have another one so we can get a lot of variation in there so all right and now uh, let's create a time node because we want this to move over time so this means that we're going to multiply this over a rate a rate of movement so how often does it move how fast does it move so for that we're going to create a variable here a vector two uh, i'll explain why it's a vector two in a bit so it's going to be the displacement speed and for now let's keep it zero zero and we're going to multiply anything multiplied by zero is zero so you know who cares uh so this needs to be a vector 2 because it's going to get into the UV. And if we go into the texture uh, coordinate, UV, my bad. So you guys can see here that it has a green channel that goes this way and a red channel that goes this way. Uh, so what this means is that we have two channels here packed. So it's a vector, it's a, it's a gradient, right? We have one vertical, and one horizontal gradient inside of the UV. So if we want to displace things over a speed, we need to, to have controls to multiplying the rate of movement on this horizontal and on the vertical side, right? So uh, this is the idea there. Uh, to actually do the movement, we use tiling and offset, 
and we're going to plug that into the offset. So uh, very good. And now we can plug this into the UV channel of this bad boy here, right? So now we're going to do something that, um, so th this right here is not actually going to be our texture. This is kind of going to be like the displacement, right? So we're going to remap uh, our main texture's pixels um, based on that, right? So, uh, so this is kind of going to skew and warp things around. Uh, it's kind of a weird concept, but it's, but it's going to get really clear. So for that, we want to get the UV node. And the reason why is because we're manipulating the UV for the next uh, texture. And here you could do like, you could like multiply this over a multiplier, uh, but I'm going to use a lerp. I personally prefer the lerp method because... Uh, I'm unsure whether or not we want to like do multiple multiplications is better than just linearly interpolating it uh, from a performance standpoint. I don't have the info on that. So if anybody knows if it's better to do two multiplies instead of lerping, you know, let me know. Uh, because then you would have to do a multiply and then add, right? So that might as well lerp it. So here we're going to multiply this over a intensity. So we're going to call this displacement intensity. So, and we're going to plug that into the T. Uh, what the LERP node does is that it essentially uh, shifts from A to B based on T, right? So if T is 0, we're going to be 100% A. If T is 1, it's going to be 100% B. If T is 0.5, for instance, it's going to be halfway in between, right? So uh, here, let's start with a low value of 0.1. I think, uh, you know, 0.1 will work well for our purposes. So now we want the actual fire pellet. This is how I like to call it. So we're going to call here fire pellet. Uh, and this is going to be like, I have a fire pellet texture. Um, fire pellet. So this is the texture that I'm using. I'm going to show you guys here. So I have this texture like made for this shader specifically. Uh, you can use any texture here. Okay. I personally use this one and it works really well uh, for my style of video game. Right. But uh, you, you, you can make this however you want. Uh, this is more of the artsy side. So you can experiment a lot with this texture. All right, so we're going to plug this into the UV, and you guys are going to immediately see that we have a little bit of a, you know, chazam going on. Uh, but here, I think I'll, I'll plug in the B channel for my texture. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, because uh, I plugged the wrong channel, right? So different noises will yield different results. Um, so in, in my case here, uh, the, the noise that I particularly artistically like is the B. So as you guys can see here, as I change this displacement intensity, so let's see 0.5, for instance, uh, it gets stronger, stronger, right? So uh, we're, we're just remapping stuff. So for now, let's use 0.1. And here in the displacement speed, now we can start playing with this. So now we can see that there's a little bit of revolution, right, over our noise. Our noise has a little bit of chazam to it, right? So let, let, let's keep it like this. I, 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 I personally like this. So now it has this uh, kind of displacement -y effect. And this already looks quite fiery, you know, uh, in my humble opinion. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. So now, uh, here's what I personally like to do. Like, this is already a pretty convincing, uh, fire effect. Like if you multiply this by a color, you're already going to yield, a. a, a a cool result, right? So here's what we're going to do. I actually like to do a kind of erosion intensity. So this way I can have very thin uh, kind of sparkly fire and uh, some big pellets as well. So this is what we're going to do. So uh, here we're going to make a vector one, which is going to be called erosion. And uh, this is a multiplier. So uh, I'm actually going to use the power for this one, but uh, you know, uh, whatever floats your boat. Um, so we're going to put the power here. This is a very like noisy texture and we're going to put the erosion here. And the way power works is that stuff multiplies by itself. If that, if that makes any sense. So, you know, that's always cool. And the way 
we see here is that if we make one, it, it looks like this, but as we like go bigger and bigger, you guys can see that it like multiplies in this very granular model and it looks very good. So if you want a very granular fire, you can put something like four and it's gonna look very granular. So let's keep this at one for now. And let's get our blue channel here and multiply it again. And what we're going to do here is multiply those two bad boys over one each other. So, um, and now we're going to get this multiplier over here and we're going to multiply our final result. As you can see, it looks like this. And let me play around a little bit uh, with the erosion. So you guys can see like how it revolves. The reason why we're multiplying them is to just add variation uh, in complexity to the shader. So, yeah. And now we're going to multiply those bad boys together. Because now, as you guys can see, our fire has a granularity. So, if we put this at zero, it's going to look somewhat the same, right? Uh, and it's just going to have more accentuated edges. So, if, if, if we push this to like, well, six might have been too much like three, you guys can see that it's a very granular fire and this one is, it's a bit chunkier and at zero you get a really chunky fire blob. So uh, this is the purpose of those operations that we're doing. So usually, usually I would use like, you would use a vertex color or something, right? Uh, to get the color. But in this case, let's just make a variable here for the color. So uh, let's make it HDR, why not? And let's multiply that. Uh, so let's slap that in, let's get the, oh, my Unity, by the way, has been bugged for so long, and this annoys me deeply that I need to do this every time I want to edit a color, for whatever reason, it just works like that, so, you know, hold on, I apologize for that, this is just my Unity bug that I need to open the color editor and then click in there, so, let me see here if I have a cool fire. Yeah, this is a fiery color, right? This orangey kind of color. So let's go with it. So we can plug that into the color output, but uh, of course it's not gonna look 100% like correct if you're alpha blended. So if you are uh, using the alpha blend, what you can do is instead of taking this here, you can also take this little guy and plug it into the alpha channel. Uh, so yeah, we already have our fire palette, and this is how I do the fire palettes for Fight and Fall. So uh, yeah, so th this is Fight and Fall's fire shader, right? And uh, it looks pretty damn nice, as you guys can see here. It works really well with a bunch of uh, purposes. Um, and uh, yeah, and if we create here, let's create a material out of this. And let's play a little bit of the parameters. Uh, what? What the hell? Maybe we need to save. This is why it's looking weird. Yeah, yeah, we needed to save. So let's get our displacement noise here. One second. So this is the noise. Let's get our fire pellet. There's my fire pellet. Very cool. So if we look here. Uh, all right, let, let me make this big for you guys. So we have here our fire pellet. Uh, this is set to opaque, of course, that's not going to be the case, right? So let's set this to additive or something. All right, cool. So now, as you guys can see here, we can mess about with the erosion and we get different granularities of fire. If you go into the negative zone, you start getting a very hot center on your fire, which also looks pretty damn cool, if you ask me. Uh, we, we can get, like, more, uh, how can I say that, like, a fiery kind of noisy thing if you go into like really strong displacement intensities um so yeah this has a lot of of you know variety to it and this is what i like about this shader that you can procedurally make many many different fiery shapes for your game on the go very easily tweak the colors you know, tweak it to your heart's content. And uh, yeah, so all of those little fiery effects use the same technique. And uh, yeah, if you want to check out the game as well, 
Fathomfall. Uh, you, there's going to be a link in the description below, fathomfall.com. It's a hero brawler, a local multiplayer hero brawler uh, game. It's very fun. It's very frenetic. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.